Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. Welcome to another plugin knowledge session. In this session, we're going to check out the new update for PSP Infinity Strip called Wind. So, firstly, if you are new to my channel, new to my videos, and you like what you see, please click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. So, wind edition of PFSP Strip. So, firstly, if you are a if you already own the plugin, then it is a free update to you. So go and grab it. Uh, if you don't own the plugin, maybe this update will entice you to grab it. So obviously, I've got other videos on the channel going through other features, other modules, etc. of any Infinity Strip. So check those out if you want to get an overall view of it all. Uh, but this one is specific to this latest update. So this update includes a few bug fixes, a few enhancements, things like that. But the major points I guess I want to cover here is that uh, what I see is the biggest improvements is the preset selection. They have totally overhauled how it looks, how it's used. They've got uh, some professionals that have created their own presets and uh, it all looks fantastic. But the other main component, which is what we're gonna show in this video mostly, is the addition of the new module, the Reactive EQ, which is fundamentally a dynamic EQ with, you know, the usual sort of PSP twists, you know, where they stray away from what everybody else does when they do a module like this and add their own little signature thing. And in this one, they've done the same thing again with, uh, you know, boosting and uh, cutting, etc., above and below the frequency range at the same time. So let's just get into it and I will show you uh, what the update is. All right, so here we are in Cubase and we're in our project where I was doing PSP and Fini Strip practical mixes before. And as you can see, uh, the plugin, I installed the new version. So automatically, you know, we've got a new little symbol down here, you know, new version number, etc. Obviously, it's called Wind, this version. And because I already owned it, it uh, was a free update. So some of the new features will just run through quickly. Uh, or ed, ed, enhancements. Obviously, it's got a new brand new module, Reactive EQ. I'll have a look at that because that's going to be the primary focus of this video. Uh, we have a brand new preset system. So this is probably one of the things I complained about was the preset system before. When you opened it up, you just got this massive list that was very hard to navigate. And now it's consolidated into, into this lovely interface. Okay, and we can do some sorting now as well. So we've just got, you know, all we can just scroll through the lot. You know, we can even use our scroll mouse. All right, so lots of options there. You can select uh, certain instruments and even some special ones. iPhone restore, right? There's all this sort of stuff here. Now there's also designer. Okay, so what they've done is they've got presets from lots of famous engineers, artists, whatever. Let me see what they say. They did say it there. Over 50 new presets designed by professional audio producers from around the globe. So I've heard of a few of these names. You may have heard of more than me. Who knows? Uh, I've heard of Michael Brower. Right, so we've got some, obviously, some presets here. Uh, just actually to have a look at some of them. Now, how do you... Okay, we can just click up and down to open and close it. But I like the fact that it's in here. It's very good. And then you go over to my presets and I assume you'll see all your save presets as well, which is really nice. But just to pull up some presets, I'll open a new version. I just don't want to lose my original settings there. So if we were to have a look at some of the designers, so let's say we go with Michael Brown, we go, 
with a acoustic guitar. So it will pull up all the modules with some suggested settings. Now, obviously with any presets, I have no problem with people using presets as a guide or whatever else, but you need to tweak them, all right? Because these are presets based on some common things that this professional would do, but the settings are dependent on the audio that you have, right? So while the preamp might be pretty useful as it is, the filters, yeah, that might be fine as well. Again, the EQ, it all depends on the audio you've got. But things like thresholds definitely need to be adjusted because your audio may be louder than his audio or might be quieter. So it may not function the way that he expected it to function because you've got the threshold set differently to your audio. So whenever you play with presets, just take them as a guide, play with them, but make sure you tweak them to suit your audio because they're, they're, they're just giving you suggestions, right? And it's based on what they do on some of their audio, which can be entirely different to what you have. You know, male vocals here, okay? That's a big chain. So he's using, you know, a preamp here. He's got filter. Getting rid of some top end, getting rid of some low end. Bit of an EQ here, right? You know, I'm not going to go through all of these settings, right? You can obviously play here with FET Presser. Then we've got a DSer. Then he's got a limiter and he's got the master control there. Adding some extra width. Okay, interesting. You know, so there's, there's some good, good ideas here, right? And you can go through any of these artists, right? They've all got different things. I don't know. You know, there's lots of Radio Gaga, right? There's, and they got a picture of each person if you want to know who they were or you're, you think you know who they are, but you're not quite sure. So, you know, I like that. People like these sort of things, right? And you can obviously go back to all and you can go back to your application there. And obviously it gets wider depending on the width of the plugin chain that you've got there as well. So it'll either scroll more or get wider as you go. So that is really good. Really good enhancement, that one. Okay, so what else do they talk about? So that's the main ones, really. Uh, there's some improvements, improved mini mode. Uh, now, we go to mini mode. I'm not exactly sure what has improved. Added visual separation for unused slots to improve, improve clarity. Right, so, I mean, you'd have to see what gets pulled up here, but... I can't remember, to be honest, how this looked. I didn't use mini mode very much, but uh, if it's been improved and you liked mini mode, then great. I mean, it looks good there. I like the fact you got the symbols and that. I don't know if they'd had that before or not. And, you know, obviously you can see what's unused, what is used, things like that. So some other things like that, you know, improved drag and drop experience and total time loading sessions and compatibility with certain things, right? So there's lots of fixes. So it's good that they keep doing this sort of stuff. But I guess what we're here for is the, the main component. So let's just get rid of that one. All right. So. What we have now is the reactive EQ. Right, so I guess it's a, a dynamic EQ in a form, something like that. They always refer to it as filters. Okay, so um, what they talk about, I'll sort of explain it the way they explain it in the manual. Uh, it consists of two filters, the type filter, which sets the reactive filter type and the control filter which filters the incoming signal to use to control the dynamic filter. All right, so control here is obviously, I guess it's like monitoring for your uh, dynamics, your compressor type thing, arrangement, not necessarily compressor, but that sort of detection. All right, so let's go through the controls just briefly, right? We've got threshold here. 
So this is the same as what it does on a compressor or other dynamic EQs if you've used them. Just sets the threshold of where uh, it reacts. Okay, so um, how loud the audio is at uh, the certain frequency. Okay, and where to, to determine where the, the audio is, whether it's above or below the threshold, it, it will appear on these uh, LEDs here where it says above threshold and below threshold, right? So because they've got to play in hand with these controls here, which we'll talk about in a second. But that's going to adjust your your threshold where you want to determine if the audio is going above or below this line and what you want to do with it once you it is either above or below. Okay, so the time control is very similar to a compressor uh, attack and release combined in one, right? So when you have it at uh, in the middle position, they're saying it's sort of a, it's a default value for the filter frequency, right? So it's obviously got a predefined speed of how quickly it is going to attack or, you know, start and how quickly it is going to release or let go and stop activating. Uh, if you, you can then slow it down, right? So you can drop it down here and make it slower to respond, or you can go higher and make it go faster. All right, then we've got the type, which sets the filter used for the dynamic processing of the signal, right? So we've got obviously, uh, you know, in the shapes obviously show you what you're looking at here. You've got a low shelf. Uh, you've got the, you know, a peak type filter and you've got a high shelf. And as I said here, we've got our above threshold LED. So when the uh, LED, when the audio goes above the threshold, this lights up. When it goes below, this lights up. And then we've got our actual gain knobs, all right? So, okay, so these two controls here determine uh, how much gain is applied to the dynamic filter when either is active, right? So in this case here with the above one, when the audio is above the threshold, this filter here will either apply gain if you push it up or it will uh, reduce when you pull it down. And how much the audio is above the threshold will also impact how much of this gain is. So even if you have it like here, so like, say you want to cut it, all right? Let's say you want to reduce. So if you have it at minus two and it only just barely goes above the threshold, then it's going to do, let's say minus two dB cut, right? But uh, if it goes a lot higher, then it does a lot more, right? So it's sort of a, a, it goes in hand in hand with the threshold and that control there. Now, the other one here is the below. So Whereas with a lot of other dynamic EQs, you might just do one control. This one allows you to do both. So you can have a setting for when the audio is above the threshold, and then you can have a setting for it below. So you could say, when the audio goes above the threshold, I want you to cut it. But when it's below the threshold, I want you to boost it. And then sort of even it out a bit, even more, right? So you're trying to not just do one control. I guess if that makes sense, I don't know if I'm explaining that very well. All right, so on the side here, we've got a gain meter, very similar to, again, what a compressor is going to do. It's going to show you what it's doing to the signal, whether it's uh, increasing gain or whether it's actually, you know, reducing gain. And again, these are going to work hand in hand. Uh, obviously, you can see it's changing here because at the moment, the audio is below the threshold. So it's showing you how much gain it's applying to the threshold. Okay, so the transition control here, to be honest with you, I'm reading through the manual. I'm not 100% uh, confident of what this actually does. But uh, it, I mean, basically what they're saying is it sets the transition range around the threshold between the above gain and the below gain. Um, so they say the wider the transition range value, the smoother the change of the gain. This can be useful when controlling deep resonance or when using the module as a type of de to smooth out any audible artifacts 
in the transition stage between the filters. Yeah, so I don't know if it's sort of like a knee type thing on a compressor where you're trying to smooth it out instead of doing these like hard changes between below and above threshold, you're trying to round it off a bit. That that could be a bit what it is. Uh, the Q is very similar to what you would have in an EQ setting here. So this is sort of the width of the, or the you know, obviously the Q of the filter shape. Okay, so the higher the number, the wider the Q. So, you know, it'd be with a shelf, it would be a longer process to ramp up. Uh, with the peak, it would be sort of a wider peak. It would encompass more frequencies, whereas a lower value, a smaller Q would be a very tight peak, right? It'd be very pointy um, and include less frequencies in that range. Okay, then we've got control uh, filter types. Okay, so it's used for the signal processing. This is how they determine it, right? So the set of given filter types depends on the currently selected dynamic filter type. So at the moment when you got it on peak, you can see here we've got flat, uh, sort of an up peak and a down peak. If we go over to a shelf, we've got flat and then, um, I don't know, what do we call that? A low shelf and, you know, a low pass and a high pass type thing. And if we go the other way, it's the opposite, okay? All right, we've also got our standard settings that come with all the other modules. We've got our mute, we've got our solo. We can also do a side chain to an external audio source if we want to do a detection on that instead. And we can do a monitor to, to hear what we're actually listening to in this regard. And we've got some presets here so we can dial some stuff up, acoustic guitar, you know, DSing type thing. And we might have a look at some of those uh, later, but we'll go back to default. So let's just, I'm gonna move this before the master control, but Actually, we should move it to uh, where? Let's let's actually move it to the start. All right, so uh, let's actually mute that for a minute. So this is our song. All right, so what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go straight into monitor mode here. Okay, so straight away we can hear, all right, that's, this is our frequency. So if we wanted to say, do something around this 4K mark. All right, so that's no control signal. That's a peak, notch. Now, where does it differently? Now, if we want to see where it's going above and below, right? So, okay, you can see as I change the threshold, it's always below there, but as soon as we get here, we start getting some up. So let's say we wanted to tame some of those 4Ks. We could then control this and it starts reducing there. definitely dulls it down a lot. Okay, that's actually, that's pretty hard to do it on this track here. So let's actually go over to something a bit more simpler. Let's just pick a, a, a drum for instance here. So let's say we pick the kick drum and we'll load up our reactive module. And I'm gonna actually drag it. Uh, yeah, we'll do it there. All right.
All right, at the moment, this is what it's listening to, okay? So we've got it in monitor mode. So we could go for a low shelf here and we could set our threshold. All right, you can see that's always below. All right, and we can adjust our time. So let's say when it goes above the threshold, we want to actually dip it a bit. Well, let's say we dip it a lot. And let's look at our time here. You can see the meter moving. Yeah, so the bigger the number there, the slower it is, because you can see it's not actually releasing and it's basically on all the time. Now, the quicker we go, you can see it pulsing a lot more. So it's attacking quicker, it's releasing quicker. And then obviously we've got a default setting there, which is working pretty well. You can see it's a little slowish, not slow, but you know, reasonable sort of range there. Right, so that will cut every time it goes above, but you could do the opposite. We could boost every time we go above. And we could actually cut below. And this would be something that you could use to clean up a lot of bleed. Now, there's no bleed in this track. Uh, we will have a look at track that can do that. But even our frequency range here is a little bit high for a kick drum there. Now, you might be looking at that value. But then what you might want to do if you're cleaning up bleed would be the opposite. If you had it there, you probably wouldn't do that. Let's say you want to clean up bleed, you'd probably go higher. Well, let's say we go up there, and then you might do that sort of setting there. Whether you boost or not, that's up to you. Now, our transition here it does make it smoother. So if you look at the meter, it's sort of juddery. But then as you pull it down, it just looks a bit smoother. Now, a Q. Changes the slope. All right, so that's a very wide cue. We're now encompassing a lot of extra higher frequencies. That's getting it a lot tighter. You can hear it more with a peak. Okay, so you can hear how tight that cue is now. It's literally on that range. And then that widens out and includes a lot more frequencies. And that'd be the same with the opposite way around high shelf. And then you've got your control signals here. I guess this is what it's actually reacting to. We could turn it off and just have it react to everything. Or we could have it react to what it's sort of set here, right? So... Here we are reacting to the actual uh, lower end of this. Here we're reacting to the higher end. And here we're just reacting to the entire signal. Now, I guess the default is always going to be in the middle, I would, I would assume. I don't, I don't really know. Here, well, when you do a peak, it matches, right? So again, we could have it listen to the whole signal or what we're actually looking for. Or we can actually notch out what we're listening for and listen to the rest of it around it. And then we've got just the opposite way on the other side. Okay, so if we take this out monitor 
and now we can hear what it's doing. All right, so we turn it off. So you can hear we're bringing up a lot of the lower stuff there. But we're also taking out a lot of that click because we're actually actually reducing our frequency range there. Now if we switch to the opposite, hear a lot of that hiss at the top is disappearing because it's mostly below the threshold now if we go to a peak let's just have a listen to that again so let's just find this sort of boxy sound there to actually get it to go above the threshold. So every time the kick hits, it goes above the threshold there. Let's just set that to zero there, okay? So let's turn the monitor off. This is nothing. Now, if we want to boost the frequency, Here, that frequency range should be coming in more. Now, if I want to cut it, yeah, hear that mid range there just disappears. Okay, so let's see what else we've got. Let's remove that. Now, just want to see. Okay, we've got an overhead here. This has technically not got bleed in it, but it's a good example here that we can use. So let's add a reactive EQ there and let's actually just put it at the start here. All right, so let's monitor it. Okay, so what we might want in our overheads here is mainly the very, let's just say we want the top end, right? We want mainly the symbols. So we'll set our frequency. Yeah, we're only really going with the top uh, snare hit there, really. Okay, so when we're above, all right, so let's bring it in. So at the moment, we're technically doing nothing. I right, should really hear no difference. All right. So when it's below the threshold, we could cut it out. We could actually boost it up and make it brighter. So this is for, I guess, that symbol there. So probably not what we want to do. Hang on, let's go to a different setting here. Yeah, Cause that's getting that mid range there. Let's say we want to pick the top end. Alright, so 
So if we boost that, you can hear we are boosting our symbol there. If we want to dull our symbol, we can do that. You can hear it's not going over much. Now, if it's below, we can, again, do the whichever way. So when it's below, we could boost. Or we could dull it down. We could switch it around. So now we're listening to that, not the top end. We're listening to below the top end. We're basically boosting the rest of our kick without the cymbals. Or we could cut it. So let's have a look at uh, some of their examples. So let's say brighten up here. Okay, so what they've done here, uh, they've set a yeah, fairly fast time. They've got a high shelf type arrangement here. They've set a threshold. We'll have to adjust that. And what they've done is that anytime it is below the threshold, they're actually boosting it. And they're setting the uh, just under 2K. Fairly wide Q and a very tight transition. So what they're trying to achieve here is that I guess they're trying to brighten up the overall signal, right? But if the audio gets a little bit out of control and has a lot of brightness already at certain points, which is where if it goes over the threshold, then it will actually uh, not do the boost. Okay, so as soon as it's over the threshold, it'll stop boosting. Now you could obviously cut it as well. So every time those symbols hit, you could actually cut the top end out. You can see that there. So let's if you set your threshold pretty high. So that's where the symbols hit there. And a little bit of the snare. And that's that brightness control there. So if you bring it back down, right, that's normal. We're making it brighter overall, right, most of the time, because most of the time it's below the threshold. But when it goes above, we stop boosting. And like I said, you could even dull it down. So if you want to flatten it, make it more flat, you take the peaks off at all, totally. All right, so that's a couple of examples there. Let's try something else. What else have we got? Uh, 
All right, let's try this guitar here. All right, we'll bring this to the start. All right, so what can we do with the guitar here? Let's have a look. Uh, any defaults here? Uh, so let's see what this acoustic guitar thing does, even though it's not an acoustic guitar. Okay, so what they're trying to achieve here is a peak. They're looking at 170 hertz. Let's have a listen. And what they're saying is whenever it goes above the threshold, cut it. So obviously they're looking for uh, an annoying frequency in the 170 hertz that's maybe overpowering in an acoustic guitar. Occasionally as you're playing, is this getting a buildup of 170 hertz uh, in certain parts or certain chords, and they're actually cutting it to get rid of that sort of muddy sound. So you can even see in this case, right, there is some above the threshold. Let's see if we can... And you can see it's cutting. So you can hear that sort of muddy sound in the guitar there. It's slightly muddy. Now we could even try and tune that to this guitar, right? So we could search around for what frequency we want to find that's annoying us or something. Maybe that, do, 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 hear that? Just do that again. All right, so let's reduce that there so you can hear it. As you hear that little thumping sound, du, 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 you can see it going above the meter. This is before. Oh, that's extreme. Now you might even try a shelf with that. Because you might want to say reduce all the low end above that. Well, not reduce at all, but. So let's say there. So if you go really extreme, you can hear how thin it sounds. Cleans it up a little bit, makes it sound a little bit brighter, in fact, because you're cutting out some of that mud in the low end there. But what about the other side of things? So let's say uh, that's not what we're looking for. Okay, let's say, what about those, say, top end peaks? Okay, what about some of those? So, hear that note there? Now, if we say that note's jumping out, it's annoying me, right? Yeah, see the lead come on? It's always that one note. So when it's above, we might want to reduce it. Try to cue.
Actually, we may even want to just go for a peek. Let's have a listen to that. annoying and booster. I think the shelf sort of worked a bit better there, actually, but let's do that again. So that's before it. So it's definitely create, controlling that higher end a bit better there. So that's another option that we can use with this. So there's a few examples. Obviously, you can do a lot more with it. You know, um, it depends on what you're trying to achieve, you know, what audio you're going for, what the problem is, what you want to get out of it. But you can see some of the things you can do there where you can clean up some bleed, control a few problematic EQ areas, that sort of stuff, remove some of the mids, some of the boxiness. Um, you could use it as a de -esser. I mean, there's an example here as a de -esser. So on vocals, um, you know, we've got a, a setting here where they've set it to a peak here. So uh, 7K they've gone for. Every time it goes above the threshold in 7K, we're going to reduce it. So every time you go for a S, an S sort of sound, you're going to be around that 7K. You want to adjust that based on the vocal you're working on. You know, find the one that actually this responds to. I mean, I'll use this guitar as an example. It's not a vocal, but you want to listen and find that really peak of that shit sound from the S that's that's jumping out and then you know set your threshold accordingly all right because you want to obviously get it to be going above the threshold and how much is up to you you know you don't want it to impact on too much So it's going to be a lot more obvious if you did it with vocals because you're going to really get that frequency out there. And, you know, maybe I've gone too low here. It's not really appropriate on the guitars here, but, I mean, you can use a de setting on guitars if you have an annoying frequency. There's no reason. But you can see the example of what they use there and the purpose for it. It's obviously every time the vocalist hits, uh, you know, an S or something like that that pushes out a big burst of 7K, it's going to uh, reduce it, right? It's going to cut it back down pretty quickly and then let go pretty quickly. And, you know, as long as it goes below the threshold again. So you'll have to adjust the threshold and you'd have to adjust the frequency there. So there you go. I think it's a great addition to this set here. We're slowly really building up uh, a ton of common use elements here. and. Um, you know, you can pretty much do anything you like almost in this PSP and finish strip now. It's coming really well. And they keep adding more stuff. And if you already own it, they keep adding it for free. So that's even better. So there you go. There is the wind edition update of PSP Infinity strip. 
Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Do you think the new module is great? The presets, what do you think? Love to hear your opinion on it. If you do have any questions about the product or anything else, please feel free to put it in the comments. Love to help wherever I can. Hopefully the video has been helpful. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.